Look, are you a pirate streamer? Well, if you are, MultiChoice is out to get you. They're cracking down on pirate streaming services, and they're not just going after the big players in me anymore behind the platforms offering illegal services. They're also targeting users, and it could even mean time behind bars. Fricky Yonker is the anti-piracy director of uh, Adeta, which is a division of MultiChoice. Good morning, Fricky. Really appreciate your time time when we're talking about pirates of streaming streaming pirates of, of dstv or multi-choice content uh, now give us a figure here. give us an idea of how much it impacts on a company like multi-choice first and foremost thank you very much for this opportunity it's a, it's a great honor to be on your talk show this morning and um, <clears throat> yes i mean in terms of the impact um you know of streaming piracy on any organization that has got a streaming platform, a legal platform like Netflix, um, you know, like MultiChoice, you cannot always quantify the real impact because, I mean, you cannot say, for example, sometimes how many people are streaming illegally. Uh, it's very difficult to, you know, to actually quantify that number. But what I can say to you is that it does have an impact, a negative impact, um, you know, on the market. Um, and especially in terms of, I don't have to, you know, educate you, but I mean, if you think about, I mean, as a company, you lose revenue, you know, as a government, you lose taxes. And just in terms of the whole ecosystem within the entertainment industry, yeah. um, you know, um, are suffering greatly because mm -hmm. of internet streaming piracy. So there's numbers mentioned alone in America that in 2027, they'll lose over, I think, something like $35 billion due to streaming piracy alone in America. So it is a huge problem for all companies um, that actually, um, you know, are having content um, that are being illegally used on streaming platforms. Um, w w just short of being an admission of guilt, uh, Freki, I have in the past used VPN sites. I have gone to sites if there is a boxing match, which I don't see broadcast anywhere in South Africa, I kind of know where to go to. But but also the field has changed more from these VPN sites, something called IPTV platforms. It's where you can, the manufacturer of almost um, pirate set-top boxes, little gadgets and doohickeys which you can then plug into a smart TV and then that then gives you access to streamable content which you then don't pay for. Talk to me about what's known as a IPTV service these little gadgets i understand there was a raid on a on a on a on a factory in germiston in september uh seizing various what's known as waka tv equipment i'm so glad you're bringing waka tv up uh, in discussion so let's take waka tv as an example so what is waka tv waka tv is where you go online um, you actually download the application and then by downloading the application on your phone or your smart television set um, you pay a monthly fee then to this pirate. And uh, that gives you then access to multiple, you know, pirate content that you can view on Wacker TV. So what we as MultiChoice um, has got, MultiChoice Group, is that we've got um, identification tools that we can actually, you know, analyze, um, you know, a stream of a pirate operation. And by actually analyzing it, we can say that that actually stream is utilizing account number one, two, three. And then we actually take that actual account down. As I'm speaking to you right now, we have successfully in the last month arrested and actually taken action against seven major operations um, in South Africa alone and actually arrested people. Uh, there are pending cases. There's actually one right now as I'm speaking to you. The case is coming again up for hearing tomorrow, where a Botswana national was a reseller of Waka TV accounts uh, in Germiston again. And that person is behind bars right now, and um, it's an illegal immigrant. And the reason why this person was arrested was actually he was a thief. He actually broke into houses and into businesses. So that's what I'm always trying to tell people. When you buy anything, you know, in terms from a streaming piracy, IPTV streaming pirate operation, when you actually engage those people, you engage with actual criminals. And actually the way that you endanger yourself, you know, you can just think for yourself. I mean, they know everything mm. about you, your banking details, who you are, your mobile numbers, everything mm. they know yeah. about you. So what and, and that's also and that's is, also the risk. That's also the risk that people like me who sometimes would go to a VPN site to go watch a, a boxing match that isn't being 
streamed or, or, or broadcast is that you open yourself to the risks of malware exactly. on those on exactly. those sites. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> um, who's who's charged? Who is who, who is charged, and who do you want to target? The manufacturers, the distributors of these Waka TV box sets, or, or the end end users? We are actually um, going after the whole ecosystem right now, as I'm speaking to you. Um, all these cases, as I'm speaking to you right now, that has been done in South Africa, is pending. You know, you know, with the courts, it's with the police, it's with the hawks, it's with the commercial serious crime units of the police as well, and with CID police in various, various provinces in South Africa right now. And obviously, I mean, they are aware who those individuals are. And when we get to the point where the criminal proceedings actually has been finalized, then obviously we might consider them as well, because then we know who the, you know, who the actual, you know, the users of these uh, illegal services are, and actually then going after them as well. So, and again, there is, is that, I mean, you know, we then as, as, as multi-choice, then can initiate civil litigation action mm. and even or criminal action against those people okay. as well and ask okay. the police then, you know, to take criminal action mm. against people that are utilizing uh, those services illegally as well. So to answer Fricky, you very shortly, going yes, after we want to everyone. go after Fricky, everybody. very quickly, I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask you anyway. The police have real issues to confront. They have murder, sexual assault, armed robbery, all the big nasty things. Why do you want to come after little old me if I'm just trying to watch something that isn't available or something that I can't afford, why why do you want a policeman coming and knocking on my door for allegedly violating the Copyright Act, Ricky? I always say to, to people as well, um, very, very quickly, is that if you walk down the street and you see a car and you can't afford that car and you go into the shop in any case and you climb in that car and you drive away with it without paying, it's stealing, it's theft. Um, and the same thing in terms of that, you know, when you look in terms of to watch a game that you cannot watch it right now and you go and find it somewhere else where you're not supposed to do a VPN uh, connection as well, it's theft. You actually steal something that doesn't belong to you. So it doesn't matter in terms of if it's, you know, $1 or $100,000. If you steal something, you have steal, you're actually, you know, committing a crime at the end of the day. I understand what you say in terms of all of these things, you know, rape, murders and all of these things, the police are busy with that as well. But if you look in terms of just the impact of piracy, you know, on the entertainment industry, um, you know, it is detrimental. I mean, people are actually on the streets because of piracy. So families are ruined. People are losing their jobs because of piracy at the end of the day. So it's not just in terms of we going after individual. What we're actually doing is we are protecting people. Mm -hmm. We are protecting people's jobs, their incomes. And at the end of the day, everybody actually benefits then. 30 at the end seconds, of the day. Fricky, a question from a listener. What's the view on password sharing for DSTV accounts? So if you are a household and you are in different locations, not an issue. If you're in a household and you actually take your VPN, or your VPN, my apologies, and you take your credentials and you actually sell it onto somebody, that is illegal mm. at the end of the day. Okay. Fricky Yonker, really appreciate your time. Anti-piracy director of the Multi-Choice Group. 